<laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my channel. This is your host, That Creepy Reading, and today I'm presenting to you two creepypastas, The Bridge of the Ends, followed by Cell Phones. So, please let me know what you think of the new format, and if I should continue doing that. Till then, only time will tell, so please, sit back, relax, turn the lights down, and prepare to be scared. <laughs> Let's begin. My first thought was that it was my medication, and it had severely stopped working. Or maybe it was having some sort of bad adverse effect on my body. It was really the only... Well, rational explanation I could really think of, uh, or at least at the time. I wanted to start out with that because, well, before I explain myself, is because I want you to know why it's taking me so long to take action. You see, I have a condition. Uh, well, maybe that's not the word most people would use. I suppose most people would say that I'm batshit insane. Crazy. Mental. And to tell the truth, I probably wouldn't blame them. But... That's not really fair. When I'm on my medication, I'm pretty much normal. Eccentric, yes, and as I am now, I'm, I'm pretty eccentric too. But nothing that would cause worry. It's taken me years to get this far, and a, multi a multitude of failed prescription cocktails and over a dozen institutions. But what I will tell you, which, which I'll tell you next, is real, and is, most importantly, urgent. I know that the knowledge of my past will work against me, but please try to look past this and see for who I am now. I, I do not sound mad. Do I? Do I sound irrational to you? Ask yourselves these things as you listen, and ask yourself, what would you have done? It occurred roughly about eight months ago. I, I worked graveyard shift at a 7-Eleven. Unfortunately, with my sort of past, it's one of the only jobs that a lunatic like myself could obtain. But it's an honest living, and it gets the bills paid. <sighs> but I digress. I live in Chicago. Um, one of the benefits of living in this beautiful city is that I'm in walking distance from my apartment, so there's no need for a car or gas or any of those crazy expenditures. As I was walking home, my cell phone went off. I remember thinking it was strange since it was a little bit after 4 in the morning. I wasn't too alarmed, my friends and my family knew that I worked graveyard, so there was a good chance that it was summon someone I know, being polite, and not interrupting my sleep during the day. Whoever it was hung up before I could really answer, and I couldn't really call back because the number was listed as private. Shrugging it off, I continued on my merry way. Only thing is that it rang again, and as I got to my apartment door, I managed to answer it in time, and, ugh. But, the line was filled with static, so I couldn't really make anything out. I knew that words were coming out of the damn thing, but uh, what exactly they were is a mystery. That all happened that night. They may have seemed, well, mundane and unimportant, but it isn't for what's going to happen next. It happened again the next night. The next night, followed again and again, and it happened every night since then, including the last night. And I'm sure it will happen again tonight. It was the first sign that something had gone wrong, but I didn't know what it was until about four days later. I had assumed that someone was just pulling a prank call on me every night, that eventually I'd answer and be like, What the fuck is wrong with you, kids? But when I went to go see my sister that weekend, I found my second sign. My sister lives in the suburbs, and has been happily married for the last eight years, and has, ha and has a three-year-old son named Francis. It became something of a tradition that I take a taxi over to her place for dinner once or twice a month to show, well, yeah. So my showing up on the weekend unannounced shouldn't have been a surprise, but when I got to her house, it was empty. 
I, I, I can tell. You, you don't understand. When I say her house was empty, I mean it was empty and deserted. Nobody was there, and there were no signs that people had ever been there. The entire- no furniture, no locked doors, no light fixtures, everything. It was just bare with exposed outlets and bare floors. I told you my condition before, while I had never had this sort of hallucination before, I knew better than to think what I saw was real. An entire family disappearing in middle suburbia America <laughs> didn't make a lick of sense. So, my logical thought is that they hadn't disappeared, I would just, well, I just wasn't seeing reality as it was. I called her our taxi and went home, and I called my psychologist. Three days and innumerable blood tests later, I was declared that my medication was in full strength in my bloodstream, and perhaps I had dreamed the whole damn thing. It was worth noting that at this point, I had tried calling my sister several times and only received numerous wrong number messages with no immediate options available. I decided to take my friend to see my sister's house. If nothing else, it would at least have someone to confirm that it was indeed empty. I should note that this started with receiving phone calls. The day that I decided to enlist help of a friend, the number of calls doubled. I don't have many friends, and of the friends I do have, there aren't many who are aware of my condition. So I didn't have many options to choose from. I eventually decided on Lisa. She knew about most of my past, and most about my problem. Most. And I knew that I could trust her not to judge. When I called her, she told me that I was dumb to have waited so long to call her, and to get my ass over to her house, as uh, she liked to put it, and with a lack of a better word. God, I miss Lisa. She was always so good to me. I headed over to her place uh, that evening, only to discover that it was empty as well. Since then, everyone I knew had disappeared, one by one, and the damn phone calls continued to plague me. I threw my phone months ago, but to no avail. Pay phones ring as I pass. I find cell phones in my pocket that I have no idea even how they got there. I wake up one morning to have a fucking phone in my jacket pocket that I wore the night previous. The type always varies, but in the end, it's always the same damn ringing. The world continues on, though even though every last house I come to look at is as if there's no living soul living inside of them. When I pass the street vendor, it's empty. The shop, I, I, I can still pick up the paper of today's date and a news story, but there is no one in there. That is why I'm writing this. <laughs> and the world can still talk to me if there's anyone who's even going to respond onto this forum. Then maybe I can still talk to it. Maybe I can still send out a message. A very important message. You see, the internet exists for some reasons, and that's how- that's- that's to keep people who are lonely not so lonely anymore. I don't even fucking care about the prospect of seeing another living creature again. I care about worrying the outside world about reading papers and obsessions of mine, because I'm gonna fucking go mentally insane. And I, I've come to realize- I, I come to realize something! It- it isn't the world that's disappeared on me. It's me. I also know that I haven't been missed. You, you see, I, I, did, I, I, I didn't just vanish without a trace. I was replaced. I, I don't know what replaced me, but it, it doesn't have good intentions. No, 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 no. And w when, I said, uh, when I said earlier that I'm okay with the prospect of never seeing another living soul again, I meant it, but every time I opened up the cell phone, it appears in my pockets. Greeting. And I, I'm, I'm greeted and I'm greeted by an image of my hand clutching a knife and a slit throat. It's been locked for eight months, and I've seen thousands of phone calls. And <laughs> it's, it's fucking. It's driving me insane. It's driving me insane. <laughs> Uh, hi, hello, is this thing on? Um, okay, uh, hello. This is a story of a bridge near me. I'm known as Blake. I can't give away my full name, they won't let me, and they said that they'll force me to do it again if I do. So, 
I'm only here to tell you the events of the nights. This is my recording of what happened, so let's uh, just go on with it. 6.59 p.m. Me and my friend Jonathan were at a mine, having a few drinks, listening to a few songs, just because I wanted to show him the new Fallout Boy album, known as Save Rock and Roll. We listened to it as we mocked each other and had a few more drinks. 7.37 p.m. After that, we ended up talking about some legends and creepy stories we heard. I, he told me about some creepy ghost stories about, like, a house that never ends or something along those lines. He then asked me for a story. 7.39 p.m. At this point, I excused myself to leave for the toilet, and I decided to think of a story while on to John. After a few, I finished on the toilet and went to go wash my hands. When I went to leave, I heard some ding 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 sound of a triangle, uh, the musical instrument, coming from the same room. I searched all over the room, found absolutely nothing. Then when I went to leave again, I heard it again. The toilet flushed and then the shower turned on. I was too terrified to even move at this point. I saw something uh, some sort of a figure in a mirror, a shadow. When I spam around, um, I saw the shower curtain fly open and three scary looking figures, each of them disfigured and messed up. Uh, silhouetted in their own right, but it was odd. Something that you would probably see out of the LSD dream emulator. Like they had been dripped in acid or something. I jumped to the wall and my heart seemed like it was going to burst through my rib cage. My hands were shaking and my eyes stopped blinking. I didn't want to take my eyes off of any of them. All three seemed to be looking at me as if they were staring not at me but just in my general direction. After a few moments of this, they all said at the same time, I couldn't take it anymore. I, I chose a blink, and when my eyes slowly opened again, they were gone. What the fuck just happened? That's what was going through my mind. <sighs> 7.53 PM. John asked me what happened, what was wrong, and what I noticed. I simply didn't answer. 8.34 PM. I finally spoke to him after about 40 minutes. The bridge. I uh, stated quietly. You want to hear a story? I'll tell you a story. Uh, about the bridge of the ends. I then proceeded to tell him about this bridge. When in construction, it was running over a ravine. It was the only way to get across at the time, and the construction of the bridge seemed to have come to a halt at the end. Noting that the workers would either go funny, it's hard to explain, I wouldn't describe it as insane, but nervous, on edge, or disturbed. Or they simply would just never return. People say that the bridge was cursed and forced people, dogs, or anything to the ravine below. I told him that this was a legend that my parents told me. 9.44 p.m. After about an hour or so of telling John that story, he wanted to know if the bridge was real. I told him I don't know. I didn't. And I'd never been to it before, but I had a feeling that it was true. 11 p.m. We both decided to go to sleep. John slept in my spare bed while I was simply in my room. I needed to sleep after the events in the bathroom that I really still can't explain. It was a odd experience and it happened fairly quickly, so sorry if my details on it are rather muddied. 2.15 AM. I awoke in my room hearing the same noises from before. Uh, playing over. And over again. I searched my entire room. Nothing. I went to open my door, but it seemed to be locked, which was strange since I have never really had a lock on the door or any way to lock it. 
I turned around. There it was again. It seemed to be just odd. There, standing at the end of my bed, there were the three figures from before. I tried to scream and I tried to move, but the other two pinned me to the wall, or what seemed to be pinning me to the wall. They wouldn't let me move, and I, I could barely even breathe. I, I could barely even do anything. I thought I was going to die until I heard one of them speak four hunting words. Over and over again, I heard these words. It was like it was on repeat. The voices sound twisted and distorted. Almost like it was coming through a bad speaker, even though I could clearly see the sources of where they were coming from. It sounded condescending, yet controlling. At this point, I feared for my life. 2.22 a.m. I woke John up and asked him to come visit me at the bridge, or come with me to the bridge, rather. He questioned my motives and I made it, well, I made it up, saying that I was curious. I was thinking about the bridge. Why the bridge? I don't know. If, if I were to die, why not just kill me while I was sleeping? Those figures, I, I stood there in shock. John asked me what was wrong. I told him I have a lot on my mind. 2.46 a.m. We walked down the road, through the forest, and kept going until I heard them again. That sound. It, it, it was rather loud, and it seemed to be getting louder as I got closer. It was like it was calling to me, or trying to tell me something. I wanted to follow it, its odd melody. I took John towards the sounds of the triangle, wanting to see what, well, what craved me. There we saw it. We saw the bridge. 2.57 AM. We stood at the foot of the bridge, staring at it. Dude! D dude, Blake! It's real! Holy shit, man! Holy shit! <laughs> what about the story, though? Maybe it's just a real location, and th there's no way that story could be real. He continued on, and I simply couldn't move. I was, to be honest, terrified. All I could hear were those three voices coming from the end of the bridge. I began to walk over it. 3.02 AM. I was staring down at the ravine. I had no idea what was down there. I, I only heard two menacing words. It scared me to death. I, 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 I don't understand. <laughs> that was the only... The, the, the only... The first of the night. 12.35 p.m. I finally woke up on my house. Everything from the night before seemed a little bit of muddy. I had no idea how I got here. I began to check my phone, and I saw that I had four missed calls, all from my girlfriend, Ellie. I rang her back, and I sat up and started to speak to her, asking her how she was, if she wanted to come over, and all that type of shiznit. When she hung up, I got dressed and turned my TV on. It was on the news. The reporter begun to mention someone missing. Jonathan Ellis, my friend, he has been missing for three days. Three days! How is that possible? I swear to God I took him down last night. Did he possibly run off and... If so, then how, 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 how does the timeline even match up? 2.39 p.m. My girlfriend finally came around and I... Held her against me and I kissed her. She smiled and kissed me back and I asked her how her day was. It was May 25th. It had really been three days. Three days or I went blank. 2.56 p.m. She asked me where I had been for the past three days and I had no answer for her. I just said at my parents' house. I wanted to tell her about the figures I'd seen but... I don't know. 3.17 p.m. 
Ellie has gone to shop for the essentials. I sat down on my leather couch and I just tried to watch TV and try to calm my nerves. My favorite TV show was on, but my TV went straight to static. I tried turning it off, but it wouldn't work. Out of nowhere, my radio turned on, despite it being broken for years. Then I heard it again. The sound came from my TV as well. I, I went to the closet to get my baseball bat, and I said, All right, you bastards! <laughs> get the fuck out of my house! Where are you? I'm, I'm sick of this shit! I'm sick of you! Quit messing with me! <sighs> I I'm putting an end to this now! I shouted and my radio turned off, the fuse of my TV blew, and all the lights just turned off and I was in complete darkness. No light was coming from the windows. I was scared, despite my brave front. Not even my phone would turn on. Until I heard their voices once more. What the fuck? I start swinging my bat to no avail. To who? Where are you? Ow! Oh, fuck! I hit my hand against the wall while trying to swing the damn bat. And then it got taken away from me. One of those things' faces right was right in front of me. I had crooked teeth and wide, unblinking eyes. Unnaturally, it's... It was kind of like the uncanny valley effect. It was sharpened and it had a weird nose that was just slightly off. Is for another, not for you. I'll do as we command. Before I could do anything, I was struck by the bat. 8.38 p.m. I woke up to Ellie taking care of me and looking after me. When I saw, when she saw that I was awake, she hugged me and kissed me. She, she then asked me what in the hell has just happened, and I couldn't remember, or more, I didn't want to remember. She left the room to get more bandages from the kitchen. As soon as I left, I felt a hand on my shoulder. I didn't want to face it, not yet. I, I, I couldn't bear to see that face anymore. I'm sick of people being in my house. They spoke in a low voice. Ten thirty-five p.m. I was laying in the bed of Ellie, talking to her. I asked if she's heard anything from John. She asked me who the fuck I was talking about, and I, I said, "Your best friend in the whole world." Come on, John Ellis. Come, you know who I'm talking about. The next thing she said scared me to death, making me think about what happened that night. And then she said, Who is that? I got out of bed and ran downstairs at that point. 2.15 a.m. I woke again to this time. I went to Ellie to see if she was okay. She was awake, looking at a camera, watching a recording on it. It was my camera. I asked her what she was up to, and then she threw a fucking pillow at me. What's this? She shouted at me. I, I asked her what is wrong, and then she showed me the recording. It was from the events of the other night. Me and John seen at the bridge. Static was heard and from the recording, and so was the sound of the triangle. That damn sound. Playing over and over. Every time it did, it moved closer. Those final words I heard again. <laughs> As the camera recording shut off, she demanded I take her to this place, and so I agreed. 2.39 a.m. I took the same route as I did with John. Just like the last time, those triangles called to me, and I followed them without meaning. 2.50 a.m. <sighs> Yet again, I, I was back there. Back at that damn bridge. I have no idea what was waiting for me. My soul, my life, my sacrifice, or for me to sacrifice others to the ravine below. Ellie looked around for, well, looked around for the camera recording, just like us. Just as it did with me and John. She demanded 
for me to search the area, but I couldn't move. I saw darkness from each side. The figures were coming toward us, speaking those words I refused to remember. It rang through my head. That... That was the second night. For the third night, I ignored them. I didn't sacrifice anyone, I swear. Now I'm telling you all this story because I knew they'd come for me. They will sacrifice me to the bridge of the ends, and this may be the last time you hear from me. God damn it! I can hear that triangle. It's getting closer. I'm cocking my gun. I, 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 I don't know what's going on. Both me and my friend and my girlfriend have disappeared. <laughs> it's my turn. My only chance is to end with this. Switching to recording, uploading it now. Fuck me. I can hear it. It's right behind me. Hello ladies and gentlemen, those were the two creepypastas that we just narrated, so why don't we go into the review. The first one is a personal favorite of mine, the cell phones. It's an amazing little story that allowed me to play a character that was flamboyantly different. It allows room for you to breathe, it has a lot of build up, and it provides alternate explanations for what's happening, giving you both the supernatural as well as the probably more probable, which makes the story a hundred times better. It leaves you thinking, is this person just mentally insane leaving a stupid rant online, or is this person really experiencing something supernatural, and if so, who's killing those people? If not, then he is clearly killing people, taking pictures of it on his phone, and hallucinating these phone calls. The world may never know, it's just this amazing little story that is a nice, short, sweet bit. Almost like a Starburst, you go into it, you chew it for a little bit, and then you swallow it, enjoying a little piece of heaven. <laughs> or in our case, hell. Why don't I go into the second story? The second story was hard for me to narrate, the writing was bad, and overall, the concepts it was trying to give, it was not able to present its concepts in a way that allowed for much build-up or anything along those lines. The way it was done, this episodic nature of these things was kind of weird. Now, it was giving us timestamps of when everything happened, but if it gave us, well, maybe a script? where two people were talking and then you could like hear exactly what's going on that would be great but it's like timestamps and a description which makes it like what the fuck is going on this is a bad story the actual writing is awful at parts and makes it actually hard to narrate the main character's actual dialogue is disjointed and unnatural causing me to not be able to properly voice act them and making my actual delivery seem stilted however i gave it my best it's not quite a crappy pasta but it's not a good pasta by any measures of standards the second story is awful that's all that really needs to be said Thank you for listening to the review. To the authors of these stories, I'd like to congratulate you for giving me something to read, and I will have you credited in the description. Thank you for writing, thank you for presenting, and thank you for listening. This has been your host, That Creepy Reading, signing off.